are very interested in using this kind of semiconductor nanowires for different kind of optics applications. And one of the main reasons is that they show this very peculiar behavior where we cover only 10% of the surface with nanowires and they still absorb 90% of the light. So what we would like to understand is how does this happen? And the answer lies in optical waves. But before we go into these optical waves, I would like to show you what the nanowires look like for us doing optics. So this is all about geometry, how we design nanowire geometry, where we begin with just a substrate pattern with these gold catalyst particles, after which we grow epitaxially the nanowires, perhaps etch away the gold particle, and do more radial growth. So in this way, we have total freedom in defining the diameter and the length of these nanowires. And now, after the fabrication of these nanowires, we want to check the absorption. Since we know that they should absorb well, we do this experimentally. And to be able to measure absorption in these nanowires, we actually peel them off from the substrate, because the substrate doesn't let any light through. So what we do is to embed the nanowires in PDMS, which is a transparent material, and we rip off this film from the substrate, and it becomes completely black, so it doesn't let light through, which means that whatever is absorbed in this film is absorbed in the nanowires, and we can characterize the absorption in the nanowires. And when we do this, you see the results here for two different samples. First, of shorter nanowires, which is the red curve, and of longer nanowires, which is the blue curve. And indeed, we reach absorption that is close to 100%, even though these nanowires cover only 10% of the substrate, or 10% of the volume in this case. And to understand this, we need to use optical waves, because our common sense of how light should interact is not enough. And before going into optical waves, I thought of showing an example of more common waves that we see, where we on the large scale have ocean currents that describe the motion of water on the global scale on Earth, whereas we on the smaller scale have water waves that can show completely different behavior than what we would expect from the global behavior. In a very similar way, we have light rays that can be used for explaining how a telescope works by looking how light rays from the object we try to depict goes through the lens system and reaches our eye. And in the same way as the water waves, when we look at the smaller case, uh, scale, the light behaves completely differently. So here we see the light wave hitting a nanowire array instead where we see completely different kind of antenna behavior that cannot be explained with light rays. So to explain this, we need optical waves. So to simplify this a little bit, these rays of light that are enough for the telescopes are more or less simple for us to use because we understand how they work, whereas these optical waves are much harder because these waves are present everywhere and they are not like anything we have seen for light in our common everyday life. And there is a strong need why we need to use these optical waves in research, in nanostructures. So we have this example of a nanowire solar cell. To explain how this interacts with light, we need to use the optical waves. We can go a step further and actually create streets for these kind of optical waves. Or we can use these kind of nanowires as optical waveguides for biosensing. What is common in all these applications is that the geometrical dimensions of these nanowires are comparable to the wavelength of light. And in this case, we have no intuitive feeling for what happens with the optics. And this is where the optics modeling comes in. So this, this optics modeling will show us what happens. So what we do is to solve the electromagnetic wave equation. It's up to the left here, which can be used, for example, to explain how this famous double slit experiment works, where we send light towards a narrow slit from which light waves are spread out, hitting a double slit and creating an interference pattern at the screen further down. 
So this kind of uh, modeling includes diffraction, interference, and polarization, which is all that is needed for explaining how light interacts with nanostructures. So what we do with the nanowires is to take into account three different geometrical parameters. The diameter, the length, and the period of the nanowires. And what we want to know is, do these nanowires cast shadows? So if they would cast shadows, the optics would look like in this image here. But what we find instead is that these nanowires work as optical antennas. So they actually can collect light from a large surrounding. So here we have modeling. What we need to know is, does this modeling actually work? Can we trust it? And here are some of our experimental results compared to these modeling results. So the blue curve here is modeled reflection from a nanowire array, and the red curve is modeled results. And they show excellent agreement here, including the interference pattern, which is one of the hardest things to reproduce in modeling. So this means that we have a theoretical toolbox that is very suitable for these kind of investigations, so we don't actually have to make all different kinds of samples. It's enough that we do modeling, which is a lot faster than experiments, and in this way we can find new phenomena, new optical phenomena in these nanostructures by varying different parameters, which is what we have done to discover new kind of optics in these nanowires. And here you see a graph where we have the absorption that happens in nanowires for varying diameter. So when we go to large diameters to the right, we are in the limit of geometrical optics. That would be the optics you use for a telescope, where light either hits the nanowire or goes between the nanowires. To the left, we are in the case of electrostatic screening, where we have small diameter nanowires, light doesn't penetrate into the nanowires, and we have weak absorption. So if we are aiming for solar cells, we don't want to be in either one of these two limits. We want to be in the middle here, where the nanowires actually work as optical antennas and funnel light into them. So here we have exactly the right size of the nanowires to couple light in maximally. And if we check on this analysis, we actually find that when we are at this resonance compared to when we are uh, in the case of small diameter nanowires, the absorption per volume material varies by a factor of 200. This means that there is a difference between needing, for example, 5 micrometer long nanowires or 1 millimeter long nanowires to get the same absorption. So if you end up in the wrong case here, your solar cell will absorb poorly. So in this way, the modeling here is absolutely necessary to know what you should aim for for successful applications. And as one of the applications, especially for these solar cells, we have tried to study how much light is absorbed at different parts of the nanowires, from which we can extract the current that we could get out from the solar cell. And you see here, as the black curve, the measured photocurrent for varying length of the top segment of these nanowires, and the modeled uh, current that we can get out. And we find this excellent agreement, which means that we can actually use this modeling to guide us in the design of these solar cells. So as a conclusion, the everyday intuition we have of optics that would work for microscopes, for telescopes, for mirrors, it simply doesn't work for our nanostructures. Instead, we need to use this kind of optical modeling for it. And we have found this huge 200 times factor in the material consumption. And this modeling can be used for discovering new optical effects and for designing and optimizing nanostructured solar cells, light emitting diodes, photodiodes, any of the electronical devices. Thank you. So if, if we take the intuitive quality factor from, from engineering, from, from radio frequency stuff, um, we either get a very n narrow quality factor or the large amplitude or something more shallow. Would, would that be transferable um, to your modeling that you either get a really, let's say, dark red peak 
with a high absorption or could you tailor that that you could say from whatever comes through the clouds can can be absorbed in a decent manner that the let's say area under the curve is maximum uh, so the special thing with these semiconductor nanowires is that they are more or less dielectric so they are not metallic so we can actually tune this resonance width quite freely by the geometrical design. So we have resonances that are quite leaky. And that's what gives us a lot of options in actually trying to tune the optical spectra compared to purely metallic structures. 